So our first row, you, you notice was kind of like the creation of like human consciousness. We had like attention with the magician, then we had the subconscious with the high priestess, then we had the coming together of the two, which was the imagination of the empress. And then the ego beginning in the emperor, and then it kept going until we get the chariot, which is the organized self ready to exist in the world. So we're at this place where we have an ego, we have a self, we can interact, we have all these, we have, go, go th through the functions of the last video, and you'll notice how we have like sight, memory, imagination, attention, all these things to be human. Now, what happens in our second row, and I, by row, I mean seven cards. We're looking at the, is it septads or septenaries? I'm kind of dividing it into seven, uh, minus the fool, which is all of it. Uh, in the next row, it's all about the first ego death. So we're going to be working with the forces of time and self and letting go. And it's this big dramatic thing, which ends beautifully in temperance, where it all comes together for it all to be ripped apart again in row three, which is like the second ego death. And in the tree of life itself, this is just a little footnote that you can look into later. There's actually two ego deaths on the tree, tree of life. There's two veils. Uh, there's uh, the veil, there's the first veil, um, the veil of Paraketh, and then there's uh, the abyss. And you go through those two veils, and then there's the third veil would be technically Keter, which is like God mode, you know?